I want to talk a little bit about an important concept for understanding how joints work, which is um, moment arm. And uh, we're going to use Utkatasana as an example. Um, I had a question from some students a little while ago about uh, different versions of Utkatasana and pros and cons of them. And, uh, and I think to be able to answer that question and to really understand the, the loads that the joints, particularly the knee joints, are experiencing in these different versions, it's helpful to understand this idea of a moment arm. So um, we could think of there being kind of two um, extreme versions of Utkatasana, let's say. One I would call a more knee dominant version, where the knees are pushed pretty far forward and the upper body is more or less upright. So this version one. The other version I would call a more hip dominant version, where the hips are pushed further back, the upper body is on more of an incline. Um, in either version, I have to keep the weight of my body centered on top of my feet. So if I'm pushing the knees pretty far forward, my upper body has to be more upright. If I start to lean my upper body forward, I'd start to fall forward. And likewise, if my hips are pushed back, my upper body has to lean forward. If I try to bring it more upright, my weight would fall back behind my feet, and again, I would lose my balance. Um, partly, uh, the version um, that you're going to favor probably has something to do with how low you go into the pose. So it takes quite a bit of um, ankle flexibility to be able to allow the knees to shift forward and the hips to come down into a deeper version of this more knee-dominant version. Most people, as they um, come deeper into the pose, will find that they will necessarily have to shift the hips back a little bit lean the upper body a little bit more forward to keep the weight on top of the feet. Um, but there are also significant differences in terms of the, um, the loads that are being put on the joints, particularly on the knee joints. And uh, to explain that, um, we need to go into this idea of a moment arm, so I'll use the whiteboard for that. So let's look at those two different versions of Utkatasana. We'll look at the more knee-dominant version to start with. So something like that, the more hip dominant version, the knees more vertically on top of the ankles, hips shifted farther back, and the upper body on more of an incline. Okay. Um, in both cases, as I said, you have to have the weight of the body centered on top of the, um, the foot. So ideally, uh, in the, across the center of the foot, um, and so something like this. The red line would represent the, um, um, the line of gravity, so in other words, where the center of mass is in relationship to the foot. This one is probably not quite accurate, probably the upper body needs to be a little bit further back, but um, you get the idea anyway. Okay, so um, let's talk about moment arm. Um, let's have a look at the knee joint as it bends. So, foot, knee, hip. Um, as the knee joint bends and the hip descends into Utkatasana, we could visualize that the pelvis here is moving through an arc in space. And the axis of that rotation would be here at the knee joint. So kind of a semicircle with the axis of rotation of the knee joint. Now, this is more complicated, of course, because as where the hips are moving, the ankle joint is moving, so we have an axis of rotation here, we have an axis of rotation of the hip joint as well, um, because you have to take into account what's happening with the upper body. Um, but just for the purposes of simplifying things, we'll just picture that the axis of rotation is happening at the knee joint. And um, to make it even a little bit more complicated, really, if we look at the way that the knee joint rotates, the, the axis of rotation within the knee joint itself changes depending upon how much the knee is bent. But we'll keep it simple. We'll just picture single axis here and the pelvis moving in an arc around that axis. So there's a rotational movement happening at the knee joint as we lower into Utkatasana. The muscles on the front of the thigh, which are the quadriceps muscles, um, are 
contracting um, in what we call an eccentric contraction or a lengthening contraction as we descend um, to keep the pelvis from dropping further down into gravity. So the quadriceps muscles are resisting the pull of gravity. Okay, so what's this concept of a moment arm? I think an analogy that's helpful for understanding this is to think about a wrench turning a nut. So let's draw a nut here. Something, something like this. And then we'll draw the wrench. And the handle of the wrench. So we put some pressure on the handle of the wrench here, push downward. There's an axis of rotation in the center of the nut, and this creates a rotational force of the handle to turn the wrench. This rotational force is called a torque. And the amount of torque depends upon, first of all, how hard we're pushing down on the wrench, um, but it also depends upon the distance of that line of force from the axis of rotation. This line is called a moment arm. And I think we all understand pretty intuitively that if this wrench had a longer handle, something like that, and we're to push down here on this longer handle, that we'd able, we're able to turn the nut more easily. We could put more force there. That's because the moment arm is longer. So this allows us to apply more force. Obviously, when the wrench is completely vertical, there's no moment arm at all. If we continue to turn this wrench until it's um, horizontal, then we have the maximum moment arm, and that's the place where we can apply the most force. Okay, so let's apply this to our um, Utkatasana um, versions. In this version, the more knee-dominant version, this is the moment arm of the knee, this is the moment arm of the hip. So you can see very long moment arm for the knee, short moment arm for the hip. The opposite is true for this more hip-dominant version. Long moment arm for the hip, short moment arm for the knee. This version here is probably somewhere in the middle. In other words, the uh, moment arms between the hip and knee are more balanced. Generally speaking, this would be the version that I would tend to favor uh, because I think it divides the load up more evenly between the musculature of the hip, particularly the gluteus maximus muscle and the quadriceps muscle. Um, if you're a person who experiences some, some knee pain in Utkatasana and you're pushing your knees very far forward, you can see that and it makes sense because you're putting more load on your knee if your knee is getting pushed further forward. There's a longer moment arm. So if you do experience a little bit of knee uh, irritation when you're doing Utkatasana, probably a good idea to investigate shifting towards more of this kind of hip dominant um, pattern. So in other words, allowing the pelvis to move backward and the upper body to lean a little bit further forward. It'll put less stress on your knee joint. All right, hope that was helpful for you, and uh, thanks for watching.